Hecla. Now, before we get started, wait, where's the clicky thing? The clicky thing. Okay. Before we get started, uh, who here has no idea who I am? All that hurts. What a tough way to start a morning. I really want to thank Rich Downing and Jay Martin for inviting me to be here today. It's a great honor to be speaking in front of you, especially after people like David Phillips last week and before Stephen Ritz. I used to be the pickiest theater on the planet. It started really early. For example, when I was just a few months old, if my mom had eaten garlic the night before, the next day, I wouldn't nurse. <laughs> I, I remember when, I, when my dad would make pasta. It had to be plain. If there was a speck of anything, pepper, sauce, parsley, you name it, I wouldn't eat it, or I would only eat the noodles on the outside of the bowl because I was afraid it'd be contaminated. My parents were growing very frustrated and worried with me because I wouldn't eat anything. This is where they decided to make a simple change. We started growing a garden and I learned all sorts of stuff. It was really awesome because I got to be outside. It was a simple change at first because it was so fun that it started going bigger and bigger. Now we almost have a farm with chickens and rabbits. In this picture, I don't really look like I'm having fun, but I had just unloaded all that dirt and I was trying to get it to look good. I was very focused. <laughs> it's really nice because you get to be outside, watch things grow, and have fun. Um, I, I learned all sorts of stuff. One day, I was harvesting tomatoes with my dad and I held up the basket of tomatoes and I said, Dad, what can we make with these? My dad was so happy I was gonna be willing to eat whatever we were gonna have that night. He took the picture you can see behind me. That night we had tomato sauce and it was yummy. We threw in a couple of peppers to give it a kick too. <laughs> After that, I was willing to try a lot more stuff. A little while afterwards, I decided it'd be cool to share all the stuff I was learning with my friends through an app. I told my dad, and he said to go pitch my idea at a hackathon. For those of you who don't know what a hackathon is, a hackathon is where non-computer coders pitch ideas to computer coders, get a team of people who like their idea, and build a prototype in 48 hours. My dad said that if I pitched my idea and got a team, he would help me. Now I have to take into account, I was very shy, I was seven years old, I wouldn't even order my own drink at my own hot chocolate at Starbucks. <laughs> my dad th didn't think I would do it, but guess what? I did! I got a team of people. I got a team of people and I even built wireframes. Wireframes is the picture second to the right. It's the skeleton of a website on, the design of a website on paper. You can see me sharing my website on social media and my team. Parents, listen to your kids. They may have good ideas. And who knows, maybe they could meet the president one day too, like I did a few years ago. Speaking of the president, I have a little video for you. Could you please dim the lights?
sorry about the really low notes. I didn't know that would happen. But when they took uh, the kids to meet the president, they said we could ask him one question. I thought to myself on the way there, why ask him a question? Instead, tell him something he'll remember me by. So I pitched. So I pitched my app and idea to him and handed him a business card, told him that the first mate lady might like what I'm doing. <laughs> for thousands of years, people have been for thousands of years people have been eating real food. But over the past couple of decades, this has changed. Think about it. Today, we don't even know what we're eating. Now, imagine a stamp of approval that parents and kids can trust. Let's call it the Nicholas, stamp of, Nicholas Garden stamp of approval, and it looks like this. <laughs> if you have kids and you've been shopping with them lately, raise your hand. Well, it can be a challenge, based on what my mom says after she goes shopping with me and my brother. <laughs> what if there was a game where kids get points by finding foods with the stamp of approval on it, and double points if they buy it? That could make shopping a lot easier. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I'm learning to code programming. Uh, I really want to make the next version of the app myself. <laughs> Steven Ritz is a teacher in the Bronx and I love what he's doing. He's using the Tower Gardens to teach kids about health, healthier food. He's here today and will be speaking later. I met him this morning. He's really amazing. So let's all give him a round of applause. lucky to have a garden. Lots of kids are not so lucky. They may not have the space, their parents may not have the time, or who knows, there might not even be fresh produce where they live. Well, there are some solutions. For example, the Grow Arms Garden in a Box. They're fun and easy to use. In fact, kids get to learn how to take care of a small garden inside the house in a purple box. And then, of course, there's also the Tower Gardens. Right now in California, we're in a drought. In my garden, as you can see, we use a drip system, so we're using very little water. Tower Gardens are also very good for this, as they use less water. One thing that is very important to me and my generation is that by 2050, we will need double the food production, but we won't have double the land. In case you weren't listening, let me repeat that. By 2050, we will need double the food production, but we won't have double the land. So that's a problem. Well, I'm thinking the tower gardens are going to come very handy. Instead of growing horizontal, we're going to grow vertical. And that's one solution of how we're going to solve this problem. <coughs> Sorry. I visited a high school in Sacramento not long ago. They used to have a very low attendance until Mayor Kevin Johnson helped to start a garden. After the garden was finished, the attendance skyrocketed from 40-something percent to 97 percent. A lot more students graduated and went to college. And that's all right here in Sacramento because of the garden. A 
Again, one simple change. They introduced a garden. This is why I really like what Stephen Ritz is doing. Now, we can see the impact healthy food has here on the West Coast. I can see the impact for you guys is this. I can see the impact it has over there on the East Coast. Why can't we just do it all across the USA? tower gardens in every school in America. We can do this. Thank you. Thank you.